All right, welcome back to this week's breakout watch list from May 22nd to the 26th. For last week's watch list, we were split, five long setups and five short setups. But after the week that we just had, today's video is gonna be all 10 long setups. And to improve the probability of these long setups, we're always looking for the strongest stocks in the strongest groups or stocks with strong fundamentals. But before we get into the charts, this video is sponsored by MarketSmith, which is the trading research platform that we're gonna be using to break down each of the setups today. And here are the 10 setups that we'll be covering in today's video, but if you're a perma bear, no worries, I'm gonna be putting five short setups in the comment section. But now it's time to jump to MarketSmith and start taking a look at these charts. The first stock that we'll cover is ESAB, and for full disclosure, I do have a position in this. It's the only stock that I have a position in for the entire list, just so happens to be the first in the alphabetical order. So ESAB, Machinery Gen, 29th strongest group out of 197. So we do have that A group strength rating. Uh, on a daily chart, you can see we've recaptured the high of IPO. Actually, let's go to a weekly chart super quick. You can see we took out the highs from the IPO week or the second week of the IPO. And since then, we've been basing out above um, the 200-day moving average and then chopping back and forth between the 8, 21, and 50-day moving averages. But it looks like we're starting to curl up to the right side. I bought this on Tuesday as it broke out over $60 and above all the moving averages. And it did get out a little bit that day. But if you remember, on Tuesday, we had a little bit of pressure in the market. Uh, a little concerned that it didn't get going the rest of the week with the stronger market. But this wasn't a tech stock. So maybe tech, stock was collect tech stocks were collecting all the money while this just rested into that 8 and 21 EMAs. So with this, just looking for a break over Friday's high, 6066. My entry is 6061. So I'm not going to be putting an additional uh, exposure on in this setup, but it's still one that I want to keep on my watch list. Next, we have a very new IPO, KVUE. This is in cosmetics, personal care. So the first stock that comes to mind when I think personal care is Elf. It's been a leader all throughout 2022 and 2023. Has earnings in four days, so we'll see how that impacts this one. But keeping with that theme, um, this is an IPO that consolidated for a little bit, broke out through this $26 area, 26.06. Since then, has been basing uh, again here. This is a 15 minute candle, so each of these are 15 minutes. Um, for me, Ideally, this pulls back into the 2670 area, kind of builds out a second pullback, but puts in a higher low here. I'm gonna be patient for a, a little shakeout like that before coming through this pivot right around 2725 for KVUE. The next stock we'll cover is LI. This is a Chinese stock, and if you don't trade Chinese stocks, just click to the next one. Uh, this recently had earnings on the 10th year, 163% earnings per share growth, 81% sales growth, 7.5% after tax profit margin, nice gap up on 407% the average daily volume, uh, closed nicely in that range. And from there, we rallied up to 30, but got rejected a couple times, pulled back into the eight day EMA. Chinese stocks were weak um, Wednesday, Thursday. And at this point, I'm just looking at the top side pivot of $30 as a potential entry point in the short term. If in the longer term, this trades sideways for another week or two, that would be fine as well. And then we could get maybe a potential downtrend line to, to work with or pulling back and we see multiple support levels or multiple um, times coming into, what was the low here? 28.20, call it $28 and finding a bid around that area. Then that's an area that we can manage our risk against. But for now, I'll just be looking for velocity to the upside with a break over $30 as a potential entry point. Next, we have another IPO. This is Lifetime Fitness, LTH. Uh, this is one that recently had earnings, rallied up on that, nice move. Uh, from there, pulled back into the eight day, rallied, pulled back and shook out the 21 EMA, closed right on it that day. Not the, the worst thing in the world, but this is another one where I'm a little concerned that it didn't rally as strong on Wednesday and Thursday as the market did. But again, a lot of tech stocks were soaking up the money there. On Friday, down 2.1%. Coming back in that 21 EMA, this is one where I would be looking um, how it acts through $20 as a potential like first entry point, maybe split my uh, exposure up. So if I'm putting on a 20% position, 10% through 20, then 10% through the high here, 20, 25 or so. Um, or if we get an oops reversal where say the market gaps down on Monday or Tuesday or any day in the week, if we gap under the 21 EMA and then recapture it, within that same day, as we see market breadth improve throughout the day, that's an area um, that we can enter and then manage risk against the low of the day. So that's Lifetime uh, Lifetime Fitness LTH. 
Next, we have another earnings gap up, MNDY, Monday.com. This one had the highest volume in a year, might have been the highest volume ever. I need to go back and check that, but it's in computer enter enterprise software, 36 out of 197. So strong group rating, A minus there, 93 composite, 92 individual relative strength. Whenever both of those are 90s, it's a stock that uh, is at least in my universe of stocks that I'm watching. Doesn't mean everything is ready to buy at once when they're both 90s, but something that I wanna keep uh, an eye on. Also, uh, it increased its estimates for the rest of 2023 and 2024, which is nice to see. Recently had earnings where earnings were up 115%, sales were up 50%, and we had that nice move on 686%, uh, the average daily volume, closing right at the high of the day. From there, just pull back lightly and is building out around 150. If we go to a 15 minute candle, you can see just how tight this is and just how clean the pivot at 150 is. If we can see it, everyone else can see it. So when you get these very obvious pivots, I tend to size up on that move right away at 150 and any hesitation I, I get as it comes through 150, I look to trim into that strength, um, especially if we're in a choppier market, which right now it seems like the market is improving and we don't have to be uh, as quick to sell into the initial move, but something this clean, I wonder if someone's gonna kind of bid it up and then pull it back before it gets ready. But I'll still trade the pivot at 150, but the first time we get some hesitation, uh, I'll probably sell a little bit of uh, my position into strength there. This is MNDY. Next we have NXT. Uh, this is in the solar group, which the solar group right now is very weak. Uh, First Solar had earnings recently. Um, nice gap up, but then gave away a lot of that move, pulling back into 200. Um, ENPH, which had been the leader in the group, is still in a major downtrend. Actually, one of the potential shorts that I'll put in the comment section. But NXT is an IPO that is really catching my eyes with strong earnings, uh, increase of sales, 18%, not, nothing crazy there, but the price action here is really impressive. Coming through the 8, the 21, and the 50-day moving average, pushing through the previous high at 37.83, and then building out a flag above the previous highs. So it's kind of similar to ESAB, but on a shortened time frame here. Um, this is one where we go to the 15 minute candle. You can see volatility is starting to tighten up. We see a nice um, undercut and then rally at that 38, 38.25 level. And then we just consolidated on Friday. So. Uh, with this, I'll be looking for a break over the previous highs here at like 40.15 uh, and then look just to um, hold it through strength there for NXT solar, ETA, or solar IPO. When I was doing my weekend routine, a lot of the best stocks are extended in the short term, but I still found a lot of setups in the biotech space. So one that we'll cover today is PRTA. This is one that I was watching as it was pulling back into the eight-day EMA here, but uh, I do like how it bounced kind of shook out and then we're tightening up double inside day Thursday and Friday still closing over the eight day EMA um, no positive earnings to talk about sales up a little bit after tax profit margin nightmare uh, but with these I, I look for price action and I do size uh, biotechs down no larger than 10% of my uh, portfolio here so a couple different ways to play this is just up and out uh, so a break over this area 75.84 or if we pull into the $70 area, using $70 uh, as kind of the line in the sand, a couple cents under it uh, to manage our risk would be nice there. But biotechs, ninth strongest group, nice base here, breakout on above average volume, pulling back and consolidating, not doing anything wrong here. I know Bitcoin has been weak lately, but a stock that I wanna put on the watch list today was Riot, R-I-O-T. It's one that has had a nice move from $5 up to 14. Pulled back into 10, you can see the low was 10.06 there. Uh, now we're flagging out with the eight and 21 right on top of each other. That 10, uh, 50, 50 day moving average, 10 week moving average coming up underneath price. Ideally, we get a couple more inside days here while that 50 day is catching up to really um, be able to manage our risk with a stop under previous day's lows, the eight, the 21 and the 50 day moving average. But inside candle on Friday, volumes lightening up, prices contracting here. Uh, you could just draw a downtrend line from that 1443, and that would really line up with the 50-day moving average coming up if we get a couple more bars here. I'm not great at drawing that. And then a breakout. 
there. So ideally, we get a shakeout in Bitcoin uh, over the weekend. This kind of pulls into that 50-day moving average, has a bounce, and then we get over this downtrend line for RIOT. The other biotech stock that I wanted to talk about was ROIV. This is one that had a move from 287 up to $10. So super strong move, lots of power in this name. We got over the 200A, the 50, the 8, and 20, or the 21 and the 8. Since then, um, just putting in a nice base here, we have the left shoulder, right or head, and now the right shoulder of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Uh, we're also bouncing off the 21 EMA, closed right on it on Tuesday, and then nice price action Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with an inside candle closing right at the high of the day. Uh, with this, we're just looking for a break over Thursday's high as a potential entry, that's 9.38. And then I'll get my stop loss probably under Thursday's low. So slightly wider stop loss, that's 895, 5% um, stop loss. Because it's biotech, I'm not sizing up over 10% anyway. So that's perfectly in my wheelhouse for, for ROIV. And the last stock that we'll cover today is Shopify, S-H-O-P. Another one that had a, a earnings pop. Uh, earnings were actually down 50% uh, year over year, but price action moved up with above average volume, so 565% the average daily volume. Closed up 23% that day, had followed through the next two days with strong closing ranges, and then just pulled back in that eight day EMA, got nice and tight right around $60. I'm a little concerned about this one because this is more of the stock, type of stock that I would expect to move on Thursday and Friday, uh, and it didn't quite do that, so we'll see if Come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we still see the indexes and the mega, mega cap names uh, kind of stalling, just trading sideways and consolidating and allowing market breadth around uh, to improve. But this kind of do or die point at $60 right here. You can manage your risk really nicely just with a stop under 59.35 area. Uh, with this, I'll be looking to get in right around 60, 60, 50 and then manage my, my risk uh, pretty tightly with a stop there. So that's Shopify. Because it didn't rally Thursday and Friday as much as the indexes, and because it, it's one of those stocks that typically would rally with the indexes, I am gonna be sizing this down a little bit um, and then adding with potential strength there. So that's Shopify. The last one that we'll go over, remember all the short setups are gonna be in the comments section of this video. And that's gonna be the breakout watch list for the upcoming week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do me a huge favor and leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I make this breakout watch list video every weekend along with other trading related videos. And I can't forget a big thanks to MarketSmith for sponsoring the video. MarketSmith was the trading research platform that we were using to break down each of the setups. So if you like what you see and want to give it a try yourself, there's a link in the description below. And finally, if you want to hear more from me throughout the week, you can follow me on the other social media sites. I'm at Nick Drendel on Twitter and at Nick underscore Drendel on everything else. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you guys in the next video.